the past six years, I've tried to develop the most powerful and efficient engines that run off compressed air, from spring-activated inlet valves to diaphragm-actuated pistons. So what's the next step to increasing the engine's performance? Make it simpler. This is probably the simplest design of air engine, as it only requires this ball valve at the top and a pin on the piston to open the valve. Now I've tried building this design before and couldn't get it to run. But there are these engines which run off high pressure CO2 canisters and they use this exact ball valve design. And I think it's because they rely heavily on an airtight piston, which I've yet to achieve. As the piston moves towards the top of the cylinder, it pushes the valve open, filling the cylinder with high pressure air. Then as the valve closes, no more air can enter the cylinder, which is why it's essential that none of it leaks around the piston. As the piston moves down, it passes below the exhaust ports, where any leftover pressure is released, and the momentum in the flywheel pushes the piston back up to restart the cycle. But, if the piston pin is too long, it'll open the ball valve early, which could cause the engine to backfire, so it needs to open the ball valve as late in the cycle as possible. Also, as the piston travels back up, it compresses the air above it as the volume decreases, and this air can't be at higher pressure than the air supply, or the air will flow back into the tank and the large volume above the piston reduces this compression. So although it's a simple design, there's a bunch of things to get right. So first, let's try and create an airtight piston seal. To achieve this, I 3D printed a cylinder and piston from resin on the Form 3 Plus printer to make the surfaces smooth. With the o-ring fitted to the piston, it seemed to create a seal, but it was far too tight against the cylinder. Even with some lubricant, there was a lot of friction. So I just needed to adjust the piston size to reduce the o-ring contact area. However, I'm not confident it'll be completely airtight. The next step is to print the crankcase and crankshaft, which I printed with PLA on my Prusa Mark III. I could then slide the bearings onto the crankshaft and insert it into the crankcase. For the conrod that connects the piston to the crankshaft, I'm using just a small bent piece of wire, as this has proven to work well in my older engines. Then the piston can slide onto the wire and the cylinder can slide over that. And finally, the ball for the inlet valve and a high pressure air supply is attached to the top. But will it run? I did not expect that to work, first try. I've just noticed something very interesting. The O-ring doesn't seal at all uh, when it was at like 60, 70 PSI, but now this is at 80 PSI. When I push the piston up to the top, it seals. It leaks to start with, and then the, the pressure causes the O-ring to expand and actually seal against the wall. Though, because this engine won't run at pressures lower than 80 psi, I printed another piston that is slightly larger, but still has low friction. This allows the o-ring to seal at much lower pressures, and the engine runs surprisingly well for being so basic. But it could be better. By filling the engine with excess lubricant, we can visually see the airflow out of the exhaust. And because the o-ring takes a split second to seal, there is a significant amount of wasted air passing by the piston and out the exhaust. So what's the solution to this? I'm going to make my own piston seal. This new piston seal has a flange on the top that expands and contracts depending on the pressure above it. So when it moves up towards the valve, it allows the air to flow around the piston. Then once the valve opens, the air pressure will cause it to expand and seal against the cylinder, hopefully better than the o-ring did. To make the seal, I 3D printed these moulds and bought some two-part silicon. It's basically the same as using resin glue. Just add two parts together and mix. Then I can slowly drip the silicon into the moulds and let it settle from one side to prevent any air getting trapped. The following day, I can use a blunt knife to release the seals from the moulds and they look really good. But will it work? It does work, but also requires a lot of lubricant. On the plus side, it seems there is far less air leaking around the piston when the inlet valve opens. It just needs some design changes to reduce the friction. I think the cause of this friction is due to the whole seal making contact with the cylinder, instead of just the top of the flange. 
So this is the new design seal, which is tapered towards the bottom, and I'm hoping even if the whole seal expands, the bottom portion shouldn't expand enough to make contact with the cylinder. I also noticed that the old seal contained a lot of bubbles, which were probably caused by the mixing process. A common solution to this is to place the silicon in a vacuum chamber to expand and remove the bubbles. But unfortunately, I don't have a vacuum chamber, so I'll have to use the next best thing, a syringe. By sucking the silicon into the syringe, I can seal off the end and pull back the syringe piston to create a vacuum, and the expansion of the bubble seems to be working. After a few minutes, I can let the air back in and the silicon seems to be bubble free. Plus, the syringe makes it far easier to pour the silicon into the mold. The following day, I can remove the seals and check if my cheap vacuum solution worked, which judging by the lack of bubbles, it definitely did. The engine still runs, but when taking a look at the slow motion footage, the seal is still expanding far more than expected creating a large contact area against the cylinder. So I think we're going to need a slightly less flexible material for the seal. This new rubber material is a lot higher on the sure hardness scale. So where the previous silicon was about the hardness of a gummy bear, this is more like a pencil eraser. But I quickly found out that this also makes it a nightmare to remove from the molds, even with the addition of these removal tabs. I did eventually get one out and managed to test it. However, it was too stiff and the engine would require nearly 80 psi to run, just like the original o-ring design. I carried on testing a bunch of piston seals using the soft silicon and the hard rubber, but wasn't making the best progress. Then I remembered this process is called research and development for a reason, and so far I've only been focusing on the development side. So the other day I was scrolling through eBay and managed to find this. The original Airhogs Sky Shark air powered plane. Speaking of sharks, this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network that you can download onto your computer, mobile, and tablet to keep your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet. And it can also swap the real location of your device with a new one, so you can virtually travel to any country across the globe. This also allows you to change your virtual location to access libraries and streaming services from other countries, so you don't miss out on shows that don't work where you currently are. Surfshark doesn't monitor, track or store what you do online, but it can be set up to alert you if any information, such as your passwords, are breached through weak security websites. So you should really consider signing up for Surfshark VPN, and if you use the promo code STANTON or use the link in the description, you can get three months extra for free when you sign up. So go check out Surfshark today. The condition of this is basically brand new as it hasn't even been unpackaged, which is surprising for a 25 year old toy. And I haven't seen one of these since I was a kid. Well, actually I had a later version as I was only three years old when this model was released. And it was the whole inspiration behind my compressed air engine journey. But I quickly realized I have been wrong for the past six years. My first 3D printed air engine that I built back in 2017 was based on this Airhog's design, or at least how I thought it worked. The idea was that a small spring on top of the piston would keep the inlet valve open whilst the piston travelled down, which was a really simple design, but had some reliability issues due to the spring being quite prone to failure. However, after taking a look at the actual Airhog's engine, the spring is definitely there, but so is this interesting seal design on the piston. To see exactly what was going on, I removed some of the fuselage foam as it was attached with hot glue, as well as removing the original bottle. I can then 3D print a threaded adapter to run the engine off my compressor air supply. Then it can be fixed in position with another bracket so I can get some slow motion footage. And guess what? I was completely wrong about the piston spring, meaning my first ever engine was actually a unique design, but also meaning that my latest air engine is essentially a copy of this Airhog's design from 25 years ago. Now I didn't want to have to take this engine apart as I was worried about breaking it, but somehow a piece of dirt got into the cylinder, which eventually got stuck in the inlet valve, preventing the engine from running. So I had to take it apart anyway. It seems the piston seal is far thinner than any of my designs, and uses a hard rubber similar to the clear stuff I have. Also, the piston isn't actually attached to the connecting rod, it's just a loose ball and socket joint, 
which I might also have to copy as I found wear marks on one side of the cylinder after extended testing due to the conrod putting a twisting load on the piston. I then built a thrust test rig to see if this air hogs design is actually worth pursuing further. This is a thrust data from my previous best diaphragm air engine, with a max thrust of 1.18 newtons and a runtime of about 60 seconds. And this is the air hogs engine. Understandably it produces a lot less peak thrust, as the propeller is far smaller than what I used on my old engine, but the runtime is far longer, and if we measure the area under the graph, we get the engine's impulse, which is a measure of its efficiency. I previously explained it like it's miles per gallon, but instead it's thrust time per 2 litre bottle at 60 pounds per square inch. This resulted in an impulse of 39.7 newton seconds, which for reference, my old engine had an impulse of just 24.6 newton seconds. So let's take this information gathered from the air hogs engine and build our own. To create such a thin wall piston seal, I printed a positive mould of the seal and used silicon to create a negative mould. This means the final mould will be flexible, which not only helps with filling all the gaps without air getting trapped, but once the rubber has dried, I can easily peel the piston seal away from the mould. Then the seal can be glued to the piston to make sure only the flange will move. And this new piston also has the internal socket dome for the connecting, or not so connecting rod, to seat within. Only issue is, it doesn't run. Yet. The piston seal expands as expected, but just a little too much, to the point where it almost turns inside out. Whilst working on a slightly thicker design, I decided to test the engine again the next day, and well, it fired up perfectly. I think the cause for this was the rubber takes a few days to fully cure, so it hadn't fully hardened when I ran the first test. It's still not perfect as it very nearly turns inside out but it's just enough to hold on and keep an airtight seal. So how will it perform on the thrust test stand? Before I look at the data, I can already tell it's performing very well as the RPM is quite high and it takes a good two minutes to run out of air. Now, remember this graph is my best ever performing air engine. Well, here is a thrust from the new engine. Not only is it producing 56% higher peak thrust, but the runtime is nearly twice as long, resulting in an impulse of 73.6 newton seconds, which is roughly three times the efficiency. This seems like it shouldn't be possible, but if we take a close look at my old engine, it's clear why. The old engine required this initial air storage section as part of the two-stage inlet valve, which means if we have 60 psi flowing into the engine, by the time it flows into the cylinder, the volume almost doubles, meaning the piston only experiences about 30 psi. Plus, a lot of energy is wasted in stretching the diaphragm, which just springs back after each cycle, and you can definitely hear the difference in performance when running the engines back to back. But after several thrust tests, I started to notice the peak power was reducing, and it seems this is due to the piston pin wearing down from impacting the inlet valve at such high RPM. So I modified the piston to use a metal pin and added this small lip to prevent the seal over flexing. This new engine produced the same peak thrust, but ran for longer, which as you can probably guess by now, increased the efficiency even further to 121.4 newton seconds, nearly five times my diaphragm engine and three times the air hogs engine. Of course, the next step is to mount this engine on a plane, but before I do so, I want to know how much thrust I can squeeze out of it. So what happens if I increase the travel of the piston? This engine now has a piston travel of 15 millimeters, instead of the previous 10 millimeters, which should increase its torque. As you can imagine, producing more thrust will result in lower efficiency, but just look at the peak thrust of this thing. At 3.75 newtons peak thrust, that's equivalent to lifting about 380 grams which considering the total weight of my old air powered plane was 240 grams, that's enough to make it fly vertically. Of course the runtime is a bit shorter at just one minute, 
but it's still producing an impulse of 91.6 newton seconds. So the next logical step is to build a lightweight plane and tune the engine to balance efficiency and thrust. But you'll have to subscribe if you want to see that in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.